Today we begin learning about exponents and how they work, which you guys know what an exponent is. So just as a reminder, if I have a base of, let's say, x, an exponent is going to be the little number that's at the top. And that number tells us how many times to multiply something by itself. So if I have x squared, that really means that I'm multiplying x times x. And we use the acronym name to help us remember what to do with our exponents. So if we have exponents to exponents, if we have a power to power, that like x to the second to the third, we need to multiply those two exponents together to get x to the sixth. If I'm multiplying, if I have x to the third times x to the fourth, then I'm going to add my exponents and I get x to the seventh. If I'm adding, like if I had x to the third plus x to the third, then I do nothing to my exponents. That's going to be 2x to the third. And we're going to get into that more next semester. Same thing is true. Division tells me that I need to subtract. All of this information is also on your formula chart that you will have on the STAR test. So I've um, this is what you will see for the formula chart. So if product of powers means that if we're multiplying, where the word product in math means to multiply. So if we multiply, that means that we're going to add our exponents together. And then quotient. Quotient is a fancy word for division. So if I have a division problem, that means that I'm going to subtract my exponents. And power to power, which means exponents to exponents, I'm going to multiply. So that's why I have this m times n here. It's also important to remember that if you have a negative exponent, um, you need to flip it. It's going to end up in the numerator or denominator, and we will talk about that more in the coming weeks. So if I'm supposed to simplify 5 to the second times 5 to the fourth, well, first thing I'm going to do, since this is a multiplication problem, then I need to um, multiply my, I'm sorry, I need to add my exponents. My bases never change. That's important to remember. Your bases never change. Your base never changes ever, ever, ever. So it's still going to be 5, but I'm going to take, instead of 2 and 4, I'm going to add 2 and 4, and I'm going to get 6. So this would be 5 to the 6, and this is going to be called exponential form. This is our exponential form. But since this is a number, I can actually evaluate that. So I can multiply 5 times itself 6 times. And 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is actually going to give us the number 15,625. So we can say they're the same. So that's exponential form, and this is going to be numerical form. So then I have on my next problem, x to the 7th times, so again, I'm multiplying, x to the 5th. So um, again, my base is going to stay the same, so it's going to equal x, and then I add my exponents, and 7 plus 5 is 12. So remember, I take my exponents, whatever they are, and I'm adding them. And up here, I did the same thing. I took my 2 and my 4, and I added them. Now, when I'm dividing, instead of adding, I subtract my exponent. So my base is still going to stay the same. Um, and the easiest way to do this is to figure out where were there more 7s to begin with. Well, in this problem, I have 7 to the 8th. 8 is a bigger exponent, so it's going to go on bottom. So that means my answer is going to go in the denominator. I'm going to have a 7 in the denominator. And then I subtract my exponents. And I always want to subtract them in the way that makes sense. So I'm going to do 8 minus 4. And 8 minus 4 is going to give me 4. Now, notice I don't have anything in the numerator. So sometimes if I don't, or when I don't have something in the numerator, I put a 1 there as a placeholder. So this would be 1 over 7 to the 4th, which, since that's a number, this is our exponential form. Since that's actually a number, I'm going to put it in the calculator. And 7 to the 4th is going to give us 2,401. So it's really 1 over 2,401. On problem 4, I have x to the 4th over x. If I don't have an exponent, remember that exponent is a 1. So I'm going to, I need to subtract these, but I've first got to figure out where there are more x's. So x to the 4th is, the 4 is bigger, so that means my answer is going to go on top. And I'm going to subtract, and 4 minus 1 is going to give me 3. Since I don't have anything in my denominator now, I'm going to put a 1 there, which is really the same thing as just x to the 3rd. So number five and six, I'm going to do a little bit differently because I want to remind you of what this really means. So if I have x to the seventh divided by x to the twelfth, that means I have seven x's on top and I have 12 x's on bottom.
And if I have the same thing on top and bottom, I can start canceling stuff out. So I can cancel out these X's and this pair 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 and this pair. And then what I'm left with is I'm left with nothing on top, so I put a one and I am left with one, two, three, four, five X's on bottom, so I get one over X to the fifth. The same thing would happen if I subtracted my exponents. 12 minus seven is gonna give me five. I'm gonna do the same thing with problem six. Problem six, I have seven fives on top, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I have three fives on bottom. Oops, that should be a five. And again, if I have the same thing on top and bottom, they cancel each other out. And I am left with one, two, three, four fives on top. So this is going to be five to the fourth. And five to the fourth means I'm multiplying five times five times five times five, which is going to give me 625. So remember, this would be my exponential form because it has an exponent. And then this is going to be my numerical form because it's actually a number. And you're going to have to write both on some of the problems. Now, remember that on this problem where I have 1 over x to the fifth, I cannot write this in numerical form because it's not numbers. Because there's a variable in there, I'm going to leave it in exponential form. Lastly, if I have seven or problem seven, I have four t squared to the third power, which means that I'm going to I have a power raised to a power. So I'm going to multiply those two powers. Two times three is going to give me six. So this is really four to the sixth. So that would be my new uh, my exponential form. And four to the sixth is four times four times four times four times four times four. That's six fours, which is going to give me four thousand ninety six. Lastly, I have number 8, which is x to the third to the negative second power. So again, I have a power to a power, so I'm going to multiply those in. So 3 times negative 2 is going to give me x to the negative sixth. Well, in, if I have a negative exponent, we talked about this a little bit today, but if I have a negative exponent, that means that the exponent is unhappy. It doesn't like where it is in the fraction. So first of all, I need to make figure out where it is in the fraction. Currently, this x to the negative sixth is in the numerator. So in order for it to be happy, it's actually going to need to move itself to the denominator. And when I move x to the negative sixth to the denominator, it becomes positive. Now notice, I don't have anything on top, so I'm going to put a 1 there as a placeholder. So really, I have 1 over x to the sixth, and that would be my final answer.